Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 8, 2017. This first one is from my friend Joseph L. He's contributed quite a quite a bit. Thank you for this contribution from Space.com. Watch a used SpaceX rocket ace its second landing. Now SpaceX has landed some of their crafts and uh, success successfully after some not quite so successful landings where they tipped over, exploded, various things like that. They relanded a few. And now this is the first time they've actually reused one of the ones that have landed. And according to them, they can reuse them multiple times. I'll just read some from the article. A new video gives spectacular close-up looks at last week's historical landing of a used SpaceX rocket on a ship at sea. The video, captured by several different cameras aboard a SpaceX drone ship called Of Course I Still Love You, shows the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket coming in for a pinpoint landing on March 30th about Nine minutes earlier, the booster had launched on a successful mission to loft the SES-10 communications satellite into the orbit. It was the second launch and landing for this Falcon 9 first stage. The booster also helped send SpaceX's uncrewed Dragon cargo capsule toward the International Space Station on a res resupply mission for NASA in April of 2016. Um, I'll skip on down to the bottom there. It says uh, SpaceX has prioritized developing fully and rapidly reusable rockets. Such technology could cut the cost of space flight dramatically. Um, yeah, the, the, the bottom booster is the biggest part, and it's the one that's the most expensive. And uh, the, uh, the design intent is that the rocket can be flown with zero hardware changes. In other words, the only thing that changes is you reload propellant 10 times, referring to the Falcon 9 first stage. And then after the 10 times, you can refurbish them and use them up to 100 times. And Elon Musk said, actually, we could probably do it a thousand times, but um, we're going to be careful at first. So, um, During the March 30th flight, SpaceX also recovered the two-stage Falcon 9's payload, fairing the roughly 16.5 foot wide, 5 meters nose cone and protected, that protected the SES-10 satellite during launch. The $6 million fairing floated down for a soft ocean landing thanks to onboard thrusters and a steerable parachute. So, yeah, the more pieces you can recover and reuse, the better, especially the bigger, more expensive pieces. So. I think we're getting to the point to where we may see in the next 10 years or maybe even sooner um, just routine uh, going into outer space for a lot less cost. That's the main thing, just to get the, get the cost down. Next up, this is from sciencenews.org. Common virus may be celiac disease culprit. They're saying more and more that a lot of these uh, diseases people have are just an interaction of our body with the virus. So um, a common and usually harmless virus may trigger celiac disease infection with the suspected culprit, a re a, well, I think they're supposed to be some retrovirus, but it says a real virus could cause the immune system to react to gluten as it was a dangerous pathogen. I think that's supposed to be retrovirus, and they just misspelled an article. Instead of, instead of a harmless food protein, an international team of researchers reports April 7th in Science. In a study in mice, the researchers found that the, well, now they did it a second time, so it must be a real virus. I've never heard of that. I've heard of a retrovirus but not a real virus. So T1L tricks the immune system into mounting an attack against innocent food molecules. The virus first blocks the immune system's regulatory response and usually gives non-native substances like food proteins the okay. Terence Dermody, Dermody, a virologist at the University of Pittsburgh and colleagues found that the virus prompts a harmful inflammatory response. I know a lot of people are getting um, the same type of symptoms too towards red meat after they get bit and get some kind of a bug from a uh, uh, a bite from, uh, what is it, like a deer tick. Um, people get a deer tick or some other type of ticks give you an infection, and they say in typical people, uh, within six months to two years, you can go back to eating red meat. But in some cases with a friend of mine, it's lasted a lot longer than that. So a lot of these things that are coming upon is uh, just the results of infections, I think, and uh, viruses and things such as that. And last up, this one is more for the science geeks too. It's also from Science News, but I also have the science paper along with it if anybody wants to read the uh, actual published science paper about this. But uh, I don't know, many of you really enjoy, probably none of you enjoy trips to the dentist. I mean, sometimes they can be not too bad if you have a decent dentist that's uh, really careful and, and doesn't hurt a lot. But it's never enjoyable to go to the dentist, I don't think. But according to this article, Stone Age hunter-gatherers tackled their cavities with a sharp tool and tar. And this is from 14,000 years ago. They found evidence of dentistry in this picture that I'll put up here. Dental work seen from above in computer reconstruction cavities and two human teeth dating back to around 13,000 years ago contain 
signs of an ancient treatment for tooth decay. Marks on the inner walls of each cavity were made by a pointed stone tool used to remove infectious tissue research for, uh, researchers proposed. And then there's this uh, bitumen type of tar mix that there's evidence of some of it still left over in the tooth that it was used. Two teeth from a person who lived in what's now northern Italy between 13,000 and 12,740 years ago bear signs of someone having scoured and removed infected soft inner tissue. The treated area was then covered with bitumen, a sticky tar-like substance Stone Age folks used to attach stone tools to handles. I've seen that too, and that stuff can harden really, really uh, to be some nice uh, form of glue, probably just about as good as uh, a lot of the glues you can buy in the store now. And the team was led by biological anthropologists Gregorio Axila and Stefano Benazzi, both of the University of Bologna in Italy. The find indicates that techniques for removing infected parts of teeth developed thousands of years before carbohydrate-rich farming diets made tooth decay more common. The researchers report online March 27th in the new the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. Farmers may have used stone tools to drill dental cavities as early as 9,000 years ago. So dentistry has been around quite some time. And then I will also, as well, along with all the links to everything, um, right after this, the very last link will be the abstract on Stone Age Dentistry in nature.com. And it's one of those uh, nice ones, too, where they let you read the whole thing. You don't have to go to go past a paywall or something like that. So anyway, that was three stories for this week. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the contributors, too, that helped to make the TDD report possible. Um, take care. I will catch you guys next week.